Okay. Uh, so I'm recording here. This is the next design sprint. I'll, I'll wait for people to get on, but I'll just start speaking <clears throat> because we have 45 minutes today only, and I'm going to try to set up everybody for today's design sprint. So to walk through the complete workflow of today, start with the design sprint page on the wiki. Open source ecology of the org slash wiki design sprints, and there you can hit on the September 3 design sprint, which is the CB. 3D CAD collaborative workflow and there's an intro video on that page already and a working doc so the best thing to do uh, let me share actually let me share my screen so um, so everyone else can see that it's just us here Martian I think yeah yeah but that's, <laughs> that's okay because we're recording this and some people will see this afterwards oh yeah right so we can do that so um, we're on a September 3rd 2016 design sprint page once again obtainable through going to the wiki open source ecology.org open source OSC design sprint page click on the September 3rd and then the next would be go into the working document edit that and uh, because that's where we can actually allocate the different tasks to different people but what is it about today so let's explain that um, what we have with the brick press at present is so this document is opening up here let me go back to the design sprint page okay so the current what we have currently is a 3d cad file of the brick press like you see in the window here uh, it's manipulable but it's not editable this is the version that we built from 2014 on and now we want to migrate this up first of all we're doing another build on September 23rd and we want to make a couple of upgrades actually and currently the main upgrade that we'd like to do is one add a, a 10 inch cylinder instead of eight so we can press taller bricks which will help in the kind of variability you can get but also second is to get rid of um and this is under consideration right now for the build on september 23rd we might end up not doing that for this build because there's about three weeks but definitely for the future design and this is where where we will generate the complete 3d cad file here in this design sprint which is editable by building it up natively within FreeCAD. Because the idea is if you generate this 3D CAD file within any other program and then export a, a step file, you cannot edit it within FreeCAD because all the properties are pretty much lost. And that's one of those issues about, about standards within CAD. A lot of times it's, uh, uh, there's interoperability issues. Now the good thing about FreeCAD is that every single person on this planet has access to it and therefore we can we can invite a lot of people to collaborate on this project. So within the FreeCAD file, uh, let me resize my screen here. I'm going to hide, I'm going to show you one issue that we're working with. So I'm going to hide um, various parts here. I want to expose what the, the main issue that we're going to be working on today, which is, um, no. I want to hide the the covers cylinder guard there it is okay we want to expose the frame we want to expose the drawer we want to expose the secondary cylinder um, I can't see you can't no it seems to so. okay it's only showing the, the line spread. okay let me go back to that I must have did something Okay. Um, let me try that again here, see what's happening. Okay, it might have been Jonathan there. Um, on a hangout, let's share the screen again and share the... Uh, okay. Share the entire screen here. Okay. So, 
you can see it now, right? So we've got the brick press. We're hiding and unhiding parts within FreeCAD. So here we just, I just want to show the relevant parts for perspective for everyone here, which is also a, a big point about going forward and radically simplifying the machine here. So if you've got hopper, so just showing the hopper for reference so people can recognize this and the grate as well so people can recognize how this machine looks. I took away the arms, the various other secondary arms, we can keep them in there. Okay, but if you if you look at this cylinder, the way it's mounted to the drawer, which loads the earth into the brick press, um, there's another guide. So there's the so here's what I'm talking about. You see these guides, these these linear rods that are there with the holders and another mechanism there. It's it's a lot of parts. There are a lot of moving parts there for the drawer in order to guide it eff effectively moving straight back and forth. Well, thinking about this and looking at some industry standards, it's possible to remove that mechanism and just allow the drawer to be guided within the frame itself by adding abrasion resistant metal. Now the advantage of the guide rods is that it minimizes wear on the drawer because the drawer is actually floating in air with a tight gap um, in the chamber there so it's not really doing a lot of rubbing but but if we use abrasion resistant metal the idea is to be able to get away with a lot of the complexity so for all these hold the shafts the holders I mean it's just a lot of parts there that literally we probably get rid of like 50 parts at least I mean you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen twenty Man, the part count is huge. Just for this one quarter of this, I'm counting like like 25 parts already, like including the bolts and the little pieces. So it's crazy. So save about 100 parts. Major, major savings in time. So uh, we can um, save time and therefore make the build more efficient. But the, the idea here is, um, unless we get a dedicated CAD developer, we can't really change this file because um, I think this was done in a Libre design by Rob Beddingfield but not a lot of people have that software so we're migrating to FreeCAD and redesigning the whole CEB press. The way the CEB press is built right now is by cutouts of D from DXF files. So this is actually a, a file. Um, I'll guide you to where you can find it. So if you go to the the working page, the September 3rd design sprint page, best place would be just go into the design sprint document. When you go into the design sprint document no, not there. Um, I'll put in another link into here. There's another working document that's found on my log, so it's marching log on the wiki. Uh, but here it's the CB Press version 16.09 document. So I'm going to paste that into the. Um, so there's the design sprint one, um, CB Press. Doc. So I'm going to just link that into the working document. And I'm not seeing anyone in that design sprint doc itself. So please join it if you can. But if you go to the CB Press document, uh, click on that, you'll be taken to the links. So you want to go into edit um, so you can see the, the things here. More, but all the links to the source files are here as we wait for it to load. Um, essentially, it's um, the machine can produce 5,000 blocks per eight-hour run. Our goal is to build in a a soil mixer that would be efficient enough, and so basically a big upgrade to the existing soil pulverizer that will actually mix the stabilizer within a closed chamber, and that's that's mounted on the tractor, so it can also load the machine. Okay. So our goal is next major, major step for mass production of block is to, 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 to do like 5,000 stabilized block per eight hour day. Uh, that is like fast and furious. Uh, the, the largest I know of is uh, the work that actually Jim Halleck has done with three CEB presses. They were producing 3,000 stabilized blocks in, an, in a day's period. So if we get 5,000 block per eight hour day goal, 
we can beat that record by 60%. And I think the way this can work is if the tractor is the, both the mixer and the loader, which is a concept we used already within the last soil pulverizer concept that we built for loading the brick press. At that time, we weren't mixing stabilizer in there, or if we were, it was kind of a messy job doing that on the ground. So we want to control that much more tightly, build in a, um, mix, a tractor loader, tractor mounted mixer that's closed and has fine control. So the design changes, the, the, some of the other design changes, just to go over this, that we're looking at, um, we never used the full capacity of the hopper, like all the time the hopper was never more than like two-thirds full, so it might be a decent idea to shrink the hopper a little bit and therefore shrink the grade a little bit. We also found that the shaker, um, which is a, a rotary shaker, wasn't doing much typically and all just about all the shakers we had ended up breaking after some time because the hydraulic motor and that thing just basically goes on and off every brick cycle so i think the issue there was i mean it's one it's it's mechanically challenging because you're turning on a high power hydraulic motor on every every few seconds for hours upon hours and we ended up breaking those breaking the seals in those typically but since that is not really adding much to the process we think we want to get rid of that uh, if we get rid of the shaker that means we reduce the machine to two solenoids instead of three um, also just a minor addition on the guards for the draw the guides on uh, covering the drawer those bolts that you see there they're not really doing anything because the metal tends to bend anyway we're gonna get rid of those little bolts we don't need those just leave the leave the guard without the bolts and then if we want to go with an enlarged cylinder, instead of 8 inches, go to 10 inches, we'd like to do 5, in, five inch max thick bricks because that will allow us some more flexibility and actually faster, potentially faster build times. Uh, so that might require extending the bottom of the machine. Therefore, we're taking this machine and re, remaking it within FreeCAD. So if you go to page 4 of the working document, what you want to do is download the 3D CAD file of the FreeCAD, so you can go. So you'd have to look at the instructionals on FreeCAD, which are linked at the Design Sprints page. But you can download that. And this is what I'm working with right here. That's the full design file. Now this is made out of uh, primarily half-inch steel metal. Hopper is one-eighth inch, and but primarily ha half-inch for all the structure, and that's contained in the DXF file. So we have that file also linked here the second file which is download DXF part libraries so you can download the half inch part library and here and that's within LibreCAD so we should probably do a, a small explainer video on basics like LibreCAD 101 we did the FreeCAD 101 but here's LibreCAD you got all the parts so what we do is we take one part like for example you see this uh, this one of the front chamber cover for the brick press which is in the diagram here like you can see it it's actually this part right here right under the drawer this part right here so for you know for example take that we've got so the idea is just to explain a concept we've got fully accurate digital cutting files what you see right here for all the parts and the file that we have in FreeCAD right now since it's an it's a step import from a proprietary format does not allow us to edit these parts at all these are so-called dumb objects now so we while we have a good way to view it and hide and unhide things the next step is to be able to uh, totally modify anything so you effectively convert this design to a CB press construction set so you can do things like if you want to do a bigger chamber for different brick sizes you can do that if you want to add on a different hopper or whatever, possibly even make like a dual brick pressing machine, you can start manipulating this file and doing that. So we're taking the DXF cutout files and generating 3D CAD from them. So what we do is we isolate one of these. So basically take one of these, uh, erase everything off this document, and uh, take that. Um, so because there's a there's a number of people that can do this in parallel you can do this um, you can either control control C and copy or erase everything from this document and then you want to import that into FreeCAD so this is how it works let me show you an example um, so we've got um, so for one in, in um, so 
So these are the, in LibreCAD, opening up the unique parts. This is what it is. So open that up. You got all the unique parts and free and um, this is LibreCAD. Okay, from that you erase everything and extract just one. So for example, in this next file, I've extracted just the front plate that I want to put into FreeCAD. Okay, so there I have that. Okay, from there I, I did a DXF import into FreeCAD. Okay, but before, so, so the, here's an, one issue about the workflow. If you go from DXF, it turns out that um, the DXF format is not so good at units. It, it just has a number, like for example, an original front plate, whatever that dimension is within FreeCAD and in, um, in LibreCAD, and you can go into ed the edit window and you can so see the current drawing preferences and you see that the units are actually inch right here. However, when you load this into, into FreeCAD, FreeCAD treats, every, treats the imports like millimeters. So you, what you have to do is take this and scale it from millimeters to inches. In other words, you have to multiply that by 25.4, which is 25.4 millimeters per inch. And you do that by uh, doing modify, scale, and uh, you have to press on this. Um, since I selected object already, go forward here, um, and then it gets you a scaling window. So you go 25.4 and then delete original okay but I've done this already in this next file here I scaled it already okay great so after I have the the file scaled I'm going to open up FreeCAD so download FreeCAD and open it so here we can close this we can open up a new FreeCAD file and it's a simple import it says import DXF uh, within the file menu and Okay, so I'm opening up FreeCAD. These things are bogging down. Open up FreeCAD, import the DXF, and what it looks like then, let's see if I can open up a, a FreeCAD. Too many things going on at once. I'm recording the video for others to, to look at. Um, we go into FreeCAD, and it's a blank document. Okay, let's erase. Let's quit that too. So click on FreeCAD. This is in Ubuntu. FreeCAD opens up. Create a new document. Okay, FreeCAD's booting up here. Create a new document. Okay, so there's a pl little plus sign in the upper left corner. Hit it, that creates a new blue window, it's a new document. And then in the upper window, it's in the file menu, you do import, and then import DXF format, Autodex Desk DXF. So I can do things like front plate scaled by 25 DXF file, open it, and it will it actually gives some kind of weird error message, but it actually does it correctly. So I'm, I'm putting it in. So it gives me some error message, but it actually works. So it ends up getting me that file into FreeCAD. Great. So the next step is um, go into Sketcher. So this is where people have to, I'm not going to go through this, uh, watch the instructional on FreeCAD 101, the OSC FreeCAD instructionals, which are linked on the Design Sprints page for today and you you create a sketch out of this you basically trace it so this is you know this is in FreeCAD what you have to do is go into uh, basically part by uh, point by point trace out this figure using this this um, multiple line tool this, this uh, polyline tool you basically go through that you basically trace it um, but you have to zoom in closely till yeah, I won't go through the instructions here. Zoom in closely to each point, uh, to the to the area where you actually are within two squares. These squares that I drew up in uh, in this document are thirty thousandths. So that's very. I mean, that's we're zooming in quite a bit here. But you have to do edit controls and grid size thirty thousandths. So if you have these two two grid points, 
if you get it within anywhere close, I mean, you're getting, you know, 30, within 30 thousands of the actual point, so that when you zoom out, you see it's actually quite accurate. And you keep tracing that, and you should be in a plane that's, uh, you click on one of the plane, plane views. But you basically trace it. I'm just going to do that roughly here. But you go through that, uh, blah, blah, blah. You just keep clicking point by point. You trace it out um, until you have the whole whole thing. Now, so once again, like if you zoom in, the idea here is when you zoom in, uh, you're going to get very accurate towards towards the actual point. I'm just doing this fast right now. But the final product is going to be, um, so close, close without saving. Um, what I do from that point is pad it. Once again, using the pad function, extruding that within FreeCAD. Look at the instructionals. And then I get a finished three-dimensional plate. So that's what it looks like right now. So I've extruded it, and now I have a 3D image, 3D object, that now we could work with. with. So in theory here, in principle, what can happen is if we've got a lot of people, and we don't for this design sprint, how many people do we have so far? Um, but this will be published online too, so we can get more people. So, so basically a, a larger team working in parallel Right now we only have a few people on, but if you have a large number of people, which is what we're working on, and get everyone in parallel to do this, if there's like 100 or 200 parts and you got 100 people that swarmed on this, this event, then you can generate these 3D CAD files in like, you know, half an hour or an hour. And then you can put them together, so then, then you take this part and another part from the the brick press etc and you start making assembly so you start with a part then you end up with an assembly and then you end up with a finished machine so if there's say 300 parts 200 parts maybe like 30 or so assemblies and then one final machine well how, do, how long does it take to do that well with 200 people it's gonna take you an hour to generate the parts then with like 70 people after that or or like 20 30 people after that another hour to put them into the actual part the assembly of parts and then at the end another hour to put together an entire machine so that's theoretically